Polarplot is an absolutely new, groundbreaking technology in the acoustic market. The big advantage of Polarplot is that you can make a location transfer, you can deliver sound spots, something no other system worldwide can deliver. With Polarplot, you can control sound like light. Please welcome to the stage Andrea Schmidt from Holoplot and Till Adam from KDAB. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for being here. There's so many of you. Oh, my God. This is awesome. This is, for me, the most relaxed uh, conference I've had in, in many years. So the first time we we're not running it in three years. So I'm uh, breathing much easier than I was in the previous years. All right, so you might have wondered what this thing is on stage here, uh, this big thing in the middle that was uh, seen on the video feed. Uh, this is what we'll be talking about. It's the Holoplot um, product, and uh, we'll spend most of our time on a demo because that's the most interesting bit. And then we'll talk a little bit about uh, how this was built with Qt because, of course, it was built with Qt. And uh, I think that this is a kind of a unique category of product um, because it doesn't really have any screens, but then it does actually have multiple screens. We'll talk a little bit about that later on. Okay, good morning. I'm, hello? Okay. I'm Andrea Schmidt, and I'm very proud to be here. So some years ago, I thought what be, would be my way in the business life, because I'm an entrepreneur since 30 years now. And I looked into the Forbes 500, being the Forbes 2000 International at that time, and I saw there are many technology companies coming into that area. So it's very important to make money. And I think this will grow. So I'm very proud to be with you. You are the future. I think it's very, very interesting for all of you and also for us. So thank you for being here with you. Thank you. Um, uh, my name is Ted Adam. I'm with KDAB. This is mostly so you know uh, who is who. <laughs> Okay, so Holoplot delivers you absolutely new sound possibilities. So this is a world premiere. We never showed Holoplot to the audience without signing an NDA. So you are the first people to experience this. So we'll see. <laughs> And uh, KDAB, we were the, uh, the software partner in this, so we've helped with the implementation of pretty much all aspects of the product. We'll get back to that uh, in a little bit. And with that, so I think we'll start the demo. OK. So we try to show you something, or better, that you can hear something. OK, we start with our first demo. Demo part one, direct sound with steady volume. This provides a uniform level all over the audience area and avoids any articulation losses. My voice is as clear in the rear of the audience as in the front. And this is valid for music too. You will now hear a saxophone playing just in front of you with steady volume and in dry direct sound. difference to regular sound systems is that if you hear it very loud at the end of the room, you can't walk directly towards the speakers because it's too loud. 
we have nearly the same volume directly at the speaker or in a distance of 50 or 100 meters. So that's the big difference. Okay, next one, we try to change rooms. We will deliver you a short piece of music in the Berlin Philharmonics. So we exchange the room you're sitting in. So we try. Okay? Okay, so what we did is that we delivered different instruments on different places. It's very difficult in this room because this room is built to avoid any reflections. We are working with reflections. So the third piece what we play for you is being in the jungle. So we deliver, and please also close your eyes to get the feeling whether I'm right or not. So, we will deliver 3D atmosphere. The best is, sorry for the first rows, the best sound is in the back rows and in the middle. But we try to show you how we can deliver a 3D environment. So, and afterwards I will ask, who will sit directly on the water in the river, okay? Perhaps there is one, perhaps not. You will see, or here, okay? Okay. So. so, 
<laughs> so hopefully you got this 3D experience. Who heard something? Please. <laughs> okay, I'm just waiting until all the hands are up. Okay, okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Who, who had been not in the rain? Who had been at the water? Who heard the water very clear? Anybody? Ah, yes. Why? Because we send the waves with a source of water in this direction. So, having a, sorry, a better room, it's a perfect acoustics, not for us, for all regular systems. Having a regular room, a regular cube, whatever, we could directly work that you can hear water or different languages, you can hear English, German, Spanish, whatever. But we can show you in our laboratory wherever. So thank you very much until then. Yep, so. Uh, so just for explanation, this room is round and it's got a, a dome, which is extremely difficult. Usually the sound is reflected off of the walls and there's nothing that reflects in this room because it's been completely dampened to work with regular PA systems. So uh, we've given them quite the challenge, but I think they've uh, lived up to it. Um, just one, one word from a technology point of view. Um, if you want to learn how this works uh, from the acoustics point of view, uh, the Hollywood crew will be around to, to answer your questions. At our booth, we have a, a, a bit of a demo and, and materials if you want to come there and, and learn about it. Okay, so how does it all play together? Um, it's actually, uh, as I said, an interesting category of product because it, uh, it is the actual uh, domain piece of hardware, in this case, uh, an array of speakers, but it's also many other things. There's obviously uh, many audio sources that need to be um, orchestrated. Um, somehow the user needs to interact with it, so there needs to be a user interface. Uh, there's actually software involved um, for setup. So, in effect, if you break it down a little bit into technical components, you've got um, a tablet UI. That's the main user interface that you will end up uh, using as the end customer. There's a piece of desktop software that is used for setup because uh, this uses a model of the room. So there's a 3D model of the room that goes into the, into the acoustics processing, and that needs to be set up and tuned. Uh, the various sound sources need to be placed in the 3D space, and there's desktop software to do that. Uh, there is a bit of embedded backend uh, gear that obviously also runs software that does a lot of the routing, uh, the, uh, the wireless access, and uh, makes all the components talk to each other. Um, there is just plain old audio multiplexing because there's various sources that need to be selected and, and brought to the speaker array. And of course, uh, there is uh, pretty much standard AV equipment like uh, receivers or DVD players and things like that. So the audio sources, um, as you can see, there's ones that are just analog. There's uh, stereo audio, there's um, maybe a home entertainment system, but there's also streaming sources. There's things like the LNA or uh, you know, Spotify and things like that, and they all need to be brought to this because uh, in the end, this is still a regular audio system, and the user expectation is that you can use it as easily and as comfortably as you would uh, use any other stereo system. So. Uh, let's look at the speaker array itself. Um, some technical data, maybe, Andreas, you want to go into yes, that a little bit? Yes, okay. Thank you very much, uh, Till. This is not a regular speaker system, but it's okay. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> the, the only chance that I'm uh, the head in front of this wall is that we have brains behind the wall, and I want to introduce you to Helmut Ellers, please. Please, he's the inventor. <laughs> So, Frank Schmidt, the founder and the CEO of the company. So, these are the brains. I'm just the communicator, okay? Just to be clear for any questions later on. Okay, <laughs> so here we have the speaker wall, more than 1,000 speakers, which each a single one has his separate driver. We can work with four modules, 14, 40, 400. It's very, very easy to work with that. And we can create different rooms. We can exchange regular rooms. Uh, you can hear at home, even at home, you can hear the same sound what you heard here because the system recreates the rooms we have in the system. So the first for the wall is the wall learns where it stands. So we took in all the 3D data into the system, and then the system knows what reflection they have to build 
to the ceiling if you want to sit in the church and hear, some, hear something in the church. The reflections to the ceiling will go later than the reflections to the walls. So you can tighten your room and you can make your room wider, whatever you want to hear. This is what Holoplot is doing for you. Okay. Yep, or in technical terms, uh, model-driven waveform synthesis. <laughs> Sorry, I am an engineer. <laughs> I was an engineer at some point. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's face it. Um, okay, so the embedded controller, basically run-of-the-mill embedded stuff. Um, it's a little, you know, system on a chip, uh, um, running custom uh, operating system and a bit of software on there. Nothing really magical, but still software that needs to be written. And obviously, we used Qt uh, on that guy to do all of the communication with all the other parts and uh, basically non-UI uh, management stuff, communication protocols and things like that. Uh, then there is the actual audio. Um, that needs to be talked to, so it has various interfaces. Some of them are you know, various service APIs, REST stuff, SOAP stuff, DLNA, various protocols that need to be uh, spoken in order to communicate with the audio hardware. And again, Qt obviously makes it quite easy to do that, so we had a, uh, it was uh, quite the challenge to talk to all of this different bit of gear in the various languages that it speaks, but um, we managed to bring it into a cohesive um, system. And then, of course, the most obvious application of Qt um, on the user interface. In this particular case, the user interface is not actually mounted onto the device, as you would see in maybe a medical device or in other spaces. It's a tablet, a consumer tablet. Um, right now, it runs on basically run-of-the-mill Nexus tablets or iPads. Um, again, thanks to Qt, it runs on both without much additional effort. Uh, this is a trend that we're seeing across a, a variety of industries that the user interface moves onto the consumer um, commodity hardware, basically off of the actual physical device. So you might say, well, this thing doesn't have a UI. Well, yes, it does a UI, have a UI. It has a, a rather intricate one. It's just that it runs on the uh, personal devices that the consumer brings into the system. Or in this case, it's actually provided with the product. Um, yeah, we just have some static screenshots. Again, if you want to play with it, it's running on iOS and Android down at our booth. Um, the challenge here from an interaction design point of view, we did the graphics design and the interaction design as well here. The challenge was that this is basically a remote control. You saw in Torsten's uh, talk earlier you know, that, of course, remote controls are what people are used to in terms of managing their home entertainment systems. It needs to be as simple as that. You basically have to have a play button that is completely intuitive. But at the same time, this is a very complex system. You can select from various uh, acoustics. You can place these sound spots in the room and so on. So it needs to do all the complex stuff while still providing basically the usability of a push button on a remote control. So that's quite challenging, and that's actually something we see across a lot of different projects. Um, some other speaker this morning said that the, the expectation of the uh, ease of use and the quality of interaction of the iPhone is, is permeating across all kinds of industries. This is another example of this, I think. So you can select various sources. You have all your gear hooked up to the system, and you can play basically whatever you can, uh, whatever you can play um, from any other source you have. Um, a particular bit of interaction is this placement of the, of the sound spot. This is something we couldn't quite replicate here in terms of the live demo, but you can basically make a certain area of the room have higher volume than other parts of the room. So think of grandpa sitting on the couch, you know, a bit of hard of hearing on the left side of the couch, and you're sitting on the right side of the couch, and you'd rather have his volume be a little bit uh, higher, but you don't want to be bothered by it. So this is the classic application. There's a bit of a 3D model, in this case a 2D representation of that of the room. You can place uh, sound sources in, in a particular spot, and then you can adjust the height, the listening height, depending on you know, how, how much of a, a sunken in grandpa you have, and also, of course, the volume. So again, this is actually quite complex. Uh, coming up with the interaction for this was, was not easy by any means, but I think we found a pretty intuitive solution that uh, the proverbial grandpa will also be able to use and move around the sound spot when he wants to move to the other side of the couch. Um, the desktop application, as I said, this is mainly to uh, be used by um, setup technicians. So this is a, a much different audience. Of course, the, interact the UI design here is basically just out of the box cute, because this is trained technicians, the specialized uh, desktop software. And basically what they do is they, they feed the model into the system and they place the sound spots, adjust the volumes, and so on. So obviously they have a lot more detail. They know about things like dBs and you know, x and y and z coordinates. This we wouldn't expose to the user, of course. So to summarize, um, we basically had the experts, the, the audio experts from, from the Holoblot team, and then a uh, surprisingly small team actually from, from KDAB uh, that was able to work across the embedded and the mobile and the desktop 
using the same basic technology stack, which made the whole thing um, actually feasible. I don't think it would have been feasible to build this with any other technology, certainly not within the time that we had available for that. Uh, we could reuse a lot of code on all these different, there's five different, six different operating systems involved, uh, very many different form factors. We could basically mock up UI and start testing the interaction extremely early within a couple of days, which was very helpful, something that uh, Torsten also hinted on earlier for LG. Um, and because we're using Qt, we're basically not at all afraid of whatever hardware or operating systems might come our way. If this is uh, to be run on, you know, I don't know, uh, a Microsoft tablet or a Yola tablet or whatever, that wouldn't be a problem at all. And if new desktop software platforms come around, uh, we have the foundation to, to, to go wherever we need to go in terms of uh, hardware. And if new uh, audio sources come along, new streaming services or whatever, we have the tools to access those and, and integrate them into the system uh, rather quickly. Andres, you want to close on this? Okay, of course. Thank you very much. So um, thanks to Kathy. I have a clock. I don't have my glasses. I think it's 18 more minutes. Thank you very much. So this <laughs> should be sufficient. <laughs> so uh, just to mention where you could use uh, Holoplot. Um, yeah, before I start with that, I just want to thank uh, you again, Till, because uh, our experience with Qt not just had been that they do the GUI just to work on. So what I learned, and that's not easy with me, believe me. So what I learned is that they have experienced Qt and KDAB to go very deep into all the different software levels. So, and this had been very interesting for us because they didn't only made the, the GUI for us, the surface, also different other things. And I think that's the big difference for, with, for other companies, for competitors, uh, doing just the surface. They think deeper, and that's so important for us as a client, just to mention that. Okay. Thank you very much. So the planning office, so this means it's very, very good, very easy for companies, architects. If they plan new buildings, they can hear the buildings before they already built. Could have been a big advantage in Hamburg, Elbphilharmonie, some other places. I don't want to mention that. So, in a flagship store, you have the big possibility if you know a huge company, they want to have a very, very good flagship store. You can deliver 3D sound. It doesn't have to be a jungle. It could be different things. you really in that mood then in the flagship store. It's not just going there and buying something. It's much more because you personal experience, it's much deeper if you have the sound additional to what you see. Okay, conference rooms, we have the possibility that we, if you have English people, Spanish people, whatever, the languages, even for Chinese it's working. So, that we have the possibilities to deliver different languages to the people, and of course the green is whatever for you would be English, American, for us it's Bavarian or German. So you can deliver separate languages to the people. So in a club, you have the big possibility and that advantage. Then you have what you need, 100, 105 decibel, as loud as you want to have it. But sitting at the bar, you can speak with the person you're aiming at at the bar. Oh. You know yourself, OK? <laughs> I think this could make life much easier. So we really try to help the people, OK? So the next, in an exhibition, you have the possibility just to walk to a picture, to a beautiful painting, and you can hear the story from the painter, from whatever you want to transfer. And if you walk out of that area, you hear what you have at the next exhibition. So this could be very interesting, hopefully. So in the studio, you're not in concert more in the cellar or whatever in the dungeon of a house in the studio. You also can make music in the living room and uh, record it there. So many things will change with this technology worldwide, I'm sure. So many of you would, uh, uh, I, I think, are used to fly to, uh, with airplanes, go by railway. So the big problem is to understand anything. So you hear, okay, they try to tell you anything. So it's sometimes between man and woman. Yeah? So the communication is sometimes not easy. 
That's the same at airports. They try to tell you something, but you don't get it. I think that's a big problem, and we can get a solution for that because we can deliver dry information, direct waves to the people they can understand, even in 5,100 meter. Okay, and the last, last one in our example, because I had a second one, but uh, still said no. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, in the shopping mall, could be the same. At the point of sale, you can deliver all the information to the people, so they get the information you want to deliver them to sell your product. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Okay, yep, thanks for me as well. And only four minutes over, that's pretty good. Okay, thank you very much.